The main thing that made me want to move out was my sanity. If you know anybody who has moved out of their parents' house, you better give them a round of applause because it's not easy at all. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I didn't tell my mom until I had a move-in date. I went five months with no job and I had to live off my savings. How much savings you think I got? <laughs> It also took me one month to actually find the place that I live in now. You can also find some that have all bills included. And if I tell you how much I'm paying, tips on how to save for deposit, live below your knees. I don't know, I just find it really embarrassing to say I ain't got it. I don't want anyone to think I'm broke. You spend so much time by yourself that you're actually able to focus. It's literally the best thing ever when you can afford it. Now that you've lived alone, do you have any worries about moving in with your partner? Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hey, welcome back or welcome. If you're new, if you're new, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And even if you're not new, make sure you like this video and everybody else like this video okay in this video i'm going to be talking to you guys about life since moving out because i can't believe i did it it's literally been almost a year since i moved out of my mum since i've been paying big girl rent since i've been cooking myself every single day almost and i just can't believe i did it to give some background i used to work night shifts at m &F. and what's so funny whilst i was working there me and a group of friends we used to always tell each other we're gonna leave this place like we're gonna get our big girl jobs we're gonna move out we're gonna get our cars we're gonna do so many great things and one day I said by the end of this year I don't want to be working here no more and God humbled me because he made sure of that but not in the way that I wanted it to happen the thing that made me want to move out the main thing that made me want to move out was my sanity I come from a very large family and I just felt like I was slacking on all of my goals and I was helping everybody else out and whilst I love up oh, I love to help people. But I just felt like I was breaking my back. I was giving my all to everybody around me. And I just didn't have that person for me. I was always trying to work it out for myself on top of other things. And I just thought, I'm going crazy here. Especially as the oldest, firstborn daughter. I know all my firstborns, my firstborn daughters can relate to this. I didn't really have anyone breaking their back for me. I had support, don't get it wrong. But I didn't have the energy that I was putting out there. And I'm sure some of you who are watching this can relate to that. But it was just starting to become very, very draining. And that's why I wanted to leave. I think everyone is aware of the current housing situation to be able to move out if you know anybody who has moved out of their parents house you better give them a round of applause because it's not easy at all it's really not easy to remove yourself from comfortability and really try and prove to yourself that I can do this on my own I feel like sometimes God puts us in very uncomfortable situations to get us away from being comfortable if we're not trying to push ourselves God will do it for us and he's not going to do it in a nice way sometimes and that's exactly what happened to me in terms of moving out God put me in a very uncomfortable situation and it just forced me to move out with whatever I had somebody asked me how my mum felt when I told her that I was moving out. and i'm not gonna lie to you guys i didn't tell my mom until i had a move-in date i know i know i know that's very very well i'm not gonna recommend it not because it's a bad thing or a good thing it's just each to their own with that one the reason why i did that is because i know myself i'm quite easily persuaded how can the influencer be easily influenced i can just overthink when i hear too many things so i just knew that if i had told my mom or anybody in the family that i was doing this i was taking this big step i know i would have got advice from here there everyone and i knew that that would have just messed up my decision and I would have been second guessing what I believe to be the best thing for me. I really wanted to trust myself in this process and believe that I could really do this. And sometimes when you think about things for too long, you end up not doing them. And I'm not gonna lie, my mom was so happy when I told her. She was so proud of me. And I was like, oh, okay. Now let's get into the real tea of what life has really been like since moving out and how exactly I was able to do so. Let's start with the finances. How much did I save before I was able to move out? How long did it take me to save and how long did it take me to even find a place to move into? Like I said guys, I was put in a very uncomfortable situation which literally forced me to move with whatever I had in my bank account. Now the change that happened in my life meant that I had to leave my job. I went five months with no job and I had to live off my savings. This is a uni student. How much savings you think I got? <laughs> And one thing about me, I don't know if it's an older sibling thing, but I really struggle to even ask for help. I just feel like nobody's going to be able to solve my problems. So what's the point of asking? So I literally suffered for those five months on my own. And on top of that, I owed my old job money because my old job used to pay me a month in advance and it must have paid me a month that I didn't work. I was thinking that like maybe it's unspent holiday or something, but no. So a chunk of my savings had to go towards that pay. And on top of that, I was going to Ghana for basically a month. Honestly, guys, it was only God that was able to get 
get me through those months. But as soon as I got my first salary job, I would literally save £1,000 of it every single month. And I did this for three months. So I saved 3K before I decided to move out. It also took me one month to actually find the place that I live in now. I was actually blessed by the local council because they actually offered to pay my deposit and they offered to pay my first month's rent. So I was able to move into this place with 3K in my savings account. Now I do live in an apartment share and of course I have my own ensuite. Like that's a non-negotiable. I am never sharing a bathroom with anybody if I have to share a place. And to be honest, for anybody who is struggling to find an affordable place or they don't want to rent alone or need to move ASAP, honestly consider apartment shares or flat shares if house shares are not your thing. Really, really do consider it. If you get some nice people to live with, it's going to be an amazing experience. And on top of that, you can also find some that have all bills included. And if I tell you how much I'm paying, I'm going to give you an in-between so you can guess. It's between 400 and 700 pounds, guys, a month. All bills included. I love it. I love it. Like, it's so, so affordable. Now, on to tips on how to save for deposit. First thing would be to decide how much you are willing to spend on the deposit. My budget for a deposit, because I wasn't putting down money for a mortgage, it was just a rent, was 1.5k as a deposit. I was looking outside of London, though. So if you're in London, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot higher than that. So really just see where your budget is going to be and then work around that. Second tip would be to open a savings account or even another current account for purely money towards a house just so that you don't dip into that money because it can be really easy to just put it in an overall savings account or just leave it in your current account and accidentally spend it it's going to take you so much longer to save for a deposit i have a high savings interest account so that will give me a return on my money at the end of the year but the one that i have if i take money out my interest rate will go down so i never take money out of it because i don't want my interest rate to go down so if you're somebody who likes to dip in and out of your savings account i would definitely recommend a savings account like that or you can also get a lockbox if you take money out of that one your credit score will go down and obviously if you don't have a good credit score you're not going to be able to move out or you can get a current account i have a current account with starling i put money in there every month because that gives you some interest on your money every single month and the last tip live below your means just tell yourself you ain't got it even if you've got it you ain't got it that's something that i had to teach myself because i don't know i just find it really embarrassing to say i ain't got it i don't want anyone to think i'm broke but i've come to the realization who cares it's my money i'm gonna do whatever i want i'm trying to be rich here so don't be afraid to live below your means don't be afraid to say no to going out don't be afraid to say no to dinner cook a homemade meal instead not shopping for new outfits every single holiday reusing some outfit do it it's gonna save you so much money how do i find staying on top of my bills so what i like to do is at the first of every month i pay my rent i have organized all my direct debits so that they come out on the first of every month and then i take out all the money that i want to distribute in all my different savings accounts and then with the money that i have left i will use 25 percent or 30 percent of it for groceries for the month and the rest of the money is just mine to do whatever i want with it what is my most expensive bill my most expensive bill guys is actually my rent now on to food i'm not gonna lie to you guys when i first moved out my food shops were a little bit expensive only because i was experimenting a lot i was trying to make every single dish in the world so i would say my food shops were around 150 to 200 pound a month but now i'm meal prep which is something i would definitely recommend because i'd be saving so much money and i'll be buying ingredients that i know i can make so many different meals out of rather than shopping for a recipe and because i am meal prepping i'm not cooking every day so i'm not running out of ingredients as far now let's move on to whether or not i would recommend moving out in your 20s but first the positives of moving out i love the independence you're not gonna get that sort of independence anywhere else i'll tell you that i love only having to worry about me i love being able to do whatever i want whenever i want and most importantly i love the peace you spend so much time by yourself that you're actually able to focus your goals become clearer your priorities become clearer it's literally the best thing ever when you can afford it. Another positive that I would say about moving now, and I feel like my firstborns can definitely relate to it. You know that pressure of always feeling like you always have to be there for everybody? You've got to compromise yourself for the better of others. You know that feeling? It just kind of dies down. It's such a massive relief. You can really focus on yourself and it just leads to a massive improvement in your mental health. It's the best thing. People have asked if it gets lonely and honestly it does not get lonely, okay? I actually enjoy the silence so much and whilst I do live in an apartment I barely see anybody because I live with working professionals. Everybody's always out at working. Yeah, yeah, I'm busy because I'm working. I'm at working. The only times you'll hear a bit of 
noise is like on a Friday night because everyone's chilling in the living room, chatting away, which is nice. Like I have that option to go and chill with them and I like that. But I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I just really do miss like my boyfriend, my friends, my family who live in London because I literally went from seeing them every day or every other day to seeing my boyfriend once or twice a month and then seeing my friend every three to four months. What's that all about? Since moving out, my biggest adjustment would probably be the fact that I need to cook all the time or else i'm gonna start i can't tell you how many times i've had a girl dinner or i've just gone to bed with no food don't tell my mom that because she's gonna go crazy there's been too many times because i get so lazy but there is a positive coming out of this and the positive is i can really work on my health goals it's up to me what i eat living at home i gotta eat my mom's food and don't get it twisted i love my mom's food but i wasn't gonna lose no weight on there and another thing is i can order food who's gonna tell me anything who's gonna ask me to share no one <laughs> And another thing is that I've kind of just been forced to know how to cook different kind of meals because living back home, I was spoiled. A worry about food? Me? My mum would spoil us. My mum would bring our plates to us. And I'm not gonna lie, that's what I wanna do for my children, okay? Because that was a sweet life. Hey, I can't believe I don't have it anymore. But now, I don't have to worry about what my husband's gonna eat. He gonna eat and he gonna eat good. Let's move on to some negative. One negative, which is actually the only negative that I can think of moving out. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And that negative is the fact that you actually have to take an extra effort to speak to your family. Because you're not waking up to them every day. You're not seeing them around the house. You actually need to make an effort to pick up the phone and speak to them. And I think that's something that I really miss. Just being able to wake up and you're dead. In conclusion, would I recommend moving out young? Specifically in your 20s. I most definitely would. Especially if you have the finances to carry you through. The peace that you're going to get is peace that you can't buy anywhere. Let's get into the advice part of this video. I did get some advice questions from you guys so I'm just going to answer a few of them. So number one, what advice would I give younger people trying to move out to gain independence? Go for it! Go for it! Obviously really see if you can afford it because moving out is great when you can still afford the life that you were living before you moved out. Having nothing left at the end of the month and you don't live at home is no. Don't even take the risk. You don't want that for yourself definitely do not rush it because independence isn't running away is independence going somewhere i think not but as soon as you feel ready financially just trust yourself and take that big step what's something you didn't do that you would advise people to do before moving out check if the place that you are moving to has parking when i moved into this place i didn't check that tell me why when i moved i was paying eight pound a day for parking it was awful but thankfully my landlord was able to find me a place completely free however it is not directly in front of my place which is just so annoying but it's okay because it's free now that you've lived alone do you have any worries about moving in with your partner not at all i'm actually very very excited and to be honest if i spoke on what i believe living with my partner married with kids is gonna look like people are gonna call me deluded so i prefer not to speak if i speak i am in in big trouble but just know i'm not worried at all what's some advice you would give to your younger self there's so many things i would tell my younger self but the most important thing is live for you don't be afraid to make mistakes making mistakes mistakes is actually low-key a good thing because there's so many things that I'm able to do now because I made a mistake and now I know how to do it. Sometimes you don't need to try to be perfect. Just give it a go and just see. You're still so young. Take risks and don't ask for everybody's opinion. Trust yourself. Materials are nice and all but investing in yourself will bring you much greater return that will benefit your future immensely. What's your next big goal? My next big goal and I know some of you are going to think don't answer that question like evil eye and that. Listen my god is greater but my next big goal is to live literally do content creating presenting full time that's why you guys need to subscribe okay i can't wait to be able to come on here and be like guys i quit my job i'm doing this full time and of course to get married <laughs> We have now reached the end of this video and I really hope that you guys enjoyed that. If there are any videos that you would like to see from me on this channel, please, please, please comment down below. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, guys. So please, please, please don't forget to like, don't forget to comment and don't forget to subscribe. And I will catch you in my next video. Goodbye. Mwah.